Thank you, Joey. Welcome, everybody. Let's keep another small trip today, like last week, to our meeting of Broken City Toastmasters. For everybody who is watching on YouTube, my name is Chanel West, and I'm the current club president for Fresno City Toastmasters. I'm going to read our Toastmasters mission statement for all of us. So as a reminder to our members for why we meet every week and for our guests as a continuing learning process for what the purpose of Toastmasters is. The purpose of Toastmasters is to provide a positive and supportive learning experience in which our members are empowered to develop number one, communication skills, and number two, leadership skills, which results in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Under the umbrella of personal growth and self-confidence, I also wanted to give a reminder that for any guests that we have, or anyone who might be considering joining the club, that we do have a mentorship program where you can be mentored in your public speaking role by somebody who is on our door and has been in the club for a while. Um, it also serves as a source of accountability to help work towards your personal goals and whatever may be the reason that you're here. For those of us who are here in person, we are able to clap in between transitions of speakers and stuff like that. I, I, we've been having some trouble with the, the clapping because people are not sure like how long to clap for. So what I'm trying to do and what I think is a, a good, perhaps a good standard is to give five or six claps and then leave it at that. And that helps the transitions to go a bit faster. So we'll stick at the five to six clap rule. And then everybody on Zoom knows that they'll continue to stay muted and use jazz hands in place of applause. <clears throat> a quick announcement, which was put out in email, is that next week we will not be meeting in observance of the three-day weekend and Memorial Day holiday. A lot of us were going to be unavailable that Tuesday anyway, and we're just getting back from vacation and things, so we decided to take the week off. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. So with that, we will look over the agenda for today. Since Mike Ellis is not here, Sarah, you are not on the agenda at all. Will you be able to take over as Toastmaster? Do you, do you feel comfortable in the last minute on that? Yeah, what's the theme? Communicating through humor. Okay, I got it. <laughs> okay. I want to add one thing too. I got uh, in contact with Amanda, remember Amanda Graham from when we were meeting over Bitwise. <clears throat> so I guess she's got, I guess the spirit right now over there at LAFCO and those related to people at LAFCO have a bunch of Toastmaster stuff that they're trying to get back to us. We got our flyer banners in the background from Peggy, who is a wife of one of the people that works at LAFCO. And then Amanda said, oh, she, I guess she was cleaning out her office and she's got like two gigantic boxes of papers, Toastmaster stuff. So I said, what is that? And she said it was probably forms or minutes or something like that. So anyway, I got to go pick that up from her thing. I don't know if we need to junk it. So we'll just, when I come, when school's out and I come over there in, in person over the summer, I'll bring it and then we can look through it and see if we need to just junk it or whatever, but I got to go pick that up today. Just a, just an update. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for doing that, Joey. I, uh, I keep forgetting to bring the banner still in my closet at home. <laughs> One of these weeks, I'm going to bring it and put it with our other stuff so that we can hang it up. <laughs> All right. And then we also have our off capture and timer rules still open. I don't know, Corinne, you don't have to do a rule since you're still a guest, but if you were interested in doing the off counter rule, you're would, welcome to try it out. What would that entail? Uh, so, <laughs> listening, each, each person as we speak throughout the meeting will be listening for use of crutch words, which the most common are like awe, um, mm -hmm. those little filler words that we add okay. in between what we're saying and we don't know what to say. And then you'll write down how many everybody said. And we'll look for patterns, like if somebody has a specific crutch word that they use a lot, that they really need to be mindful of. Yeah. I'll try my best. He'll, pre he'll be pretty good at it. Yeah, I think, I think so. You're, you're, you're <laughs> a person, right? 
And I can do the timer one. Okay, thank you, Joey. And we don't have any speeches today, so we'll just be focusing on table topics. Okay, if Sarah is ready then, I will pass the podium virtually over to her as our last minute Toastmaster of the day. Go, Sarah. Thank you so much, Chanel. Communicating through humor. I think this is, I. that's a hard one to, to, to do, but, because I think everybody has a different sense of humor and, and everybody is able to joke differently and be able to have different things. And, and just Corinne, as you're sitting there and, and I was just thinking about some time that I had spent, like when I went to, I don't, I don't know if you've always spoken English or not, but, um, but I went to Italy and I did not speak English and Joey, I know you can relate with this too when you went over there and you can't speak the language, you can't speak the language of over there and you try and learn something new, it's hard to communicate. And, and the differences also become more available because you, there's all sorts of little, little funny things that people say that you just have no idea about because literally translated it, it just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. And so why, why is that humorous and funny? So. I think that there's a lot that goes into communicating in a humorous way. This almost feels like table topics because we're doing a Toastmaster as for the moment. <laughs> I, communicating with humor can add so much to a speech. I've heard it done. I think Farron was really, really good at that, finding like little tidbits and finding stuff that's relatable, that's not crass, that's not rude, um, and that people of all walks of life would be able to understand. So. Uh, I think it's really exciting that we get to communicate through humor and try that today. I will hand it back over to our general evaluator. I have no idea who that is. I think it's Chanel. Go oh, Chanel. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to be the general evaluator for today, which means that I will be introducing the evaluation team. Everybody will explain their roles, and then at the end of the meeting, we'll come back up and give a report based on what you were serving. So, Firstly, I'm going to go right to myself because I'm also the grammarian for today. I have to quickly copy and paste for the chat, but our verb today is after, which is a, a type of humor. So let's see. So satire can have a couple different definitions. Firstly, it's the use of irony, sarcasm, ridicule, or something similar to expose, denounce, or deride the folly or corruption of institutions, people, or social structures. Example sentence, the success of the production stems from this balance of affectionate comedy and well over and then number two definition, it can also be, it can be used to refer to a, a work of art, literature, or entertainment in which, which heavily uses satire. Um, so for something where the folly of human beings or social structure, structures are exposed or ridiculed. So for example, the skit offended only those who didn't recognize it as political satire. Did you notice that all of the novels on her bookshelf were of satires? So, for example, if any of you have ever read The Onion, an online publication, it's a, a satirical magazine. So, they, they write things that are, are not true, but there's an element of truth in them. For, for Christian people, there's the, the Babylon Bee, which I think is fairly hilarious, <laughs> another satirical magazine. So those are a couple of examples. We will use this word today. And then at the end of the meeting, I'll report on who used it. So I'll now pass the podium over to Corinne, who's going to be our off hunter for today. So you can come up here. And yeah, you just practice chicken and, and then you would explain what role well, I understand my role is that I'm going to count all of those extra words and sounds 
that are not really part of our speech rate, but cloud our speech. I know those are the devices we lean on in order to really come up with the next idea or sentence, but I'm just going to have to try my best to see whether we can eliminate all of those parasite words from our lexicon. <laughs> <laughs> Very eloquent. <laughs> and then next, I will call up Mr. Joey Myers to introduce his final role. Thank you, Ms. Chanel. It looks like Corinne got a haircut. Did you get a haircut? Am I right? You're simply not paying attention. I'm not paying attention. Was that last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> on the timer rolls we'll be just doing the flower <laughs> since we won't be doing the the speeches although i will say for those watching on youtube we have a, if we had a speech today typically speeches run five to seven minutes so in that case i would use here it's nice online to be able to do this because i can take my background and i can change colors so say if we had a five minute speech, it would go green at five minutes, it would go yellow at red or yellow at six, and then it would go red at seven. But and then we do uh, valuations, evaluations would be the same, except those are two to three minutes. So two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes. Since we won't have either of those speeches or evaluation, we are going to have table topics today, which are one minute goes green, one and a half, and two minutes go red and the satire that comes with table or with toastmasters <clears throat> is that we people come into toastmasters wanting to learn how to expand their breath and instead of only talking for 20 seconds out of a minute to two minutes at the end when they get more comfortable speaking then it's trying to keep them under two minutes and then the people that come in that tend to speak too much like this guy then it's trying to get those people to cut down their speech between one to two minutes. So I think it's funny how we get people who don't want to talk, we get them talking, and then we got to bring them back. So the irony with that. So with that, I will be doing the timing and the video, the videographer, the, <clears throat> the Zoom master. So I'll be focusing in on whoever's speaking, in which case we don't have evaluations. We typically will take the speaker and the evaluator and put them kind of dual pane. We don't have that going on today. So we'll probably have more of a, a full pane for table topics, just so the table topics or the person doing table topics gets to see the bright shining faces of everybody else in the room. So with that, I will pass it back over to our general evaluator, Ms. Chanel West. Thank you, Joey. And since we don't have any speeches, I'm going to just skip a step and introduce Heather, who is our table topics master for today. We can go right into that. I'm not trying to supersede you, but we'll just go straight into it. You're good. Thank you, Chanel. So as a table topic master, I have a couple questions I thought would be fun to ask and answer. And you can answer any or all of them. Honestly, since we have quite a few um, since we have time to be able to do it, I figure we'd be able to call on the people a few times. So answer whichever ones you like, and I'm going to put them into the chat right now. There's three different questions, and it's all about comedy, obviously, which is the theme. And it's, what is your go-to comedy movie? Do you have a favorite kind of humor? For example, dark humor, parody, satires? And who is your favorite comedian? And I'll start off with saying that my favorite comedian is Fluffy, um, Gabriel Iglesias. I absolutely love him. He came to Fresno about five years ago and his show was the best show ever. He kept uh, just going with it past the time that he should have ended because he just loved us. He told us that he has never had a crowd repeat the jokes or tell the jokes along with him because he was doing some of his old school jokes, which are just some of the best. And that was one of the best shows ever. Also, if you ever get the chance to go to the Oddball Comedy Festival, uh, where it's near Mountain View, so San Jose area, 
they uh, have uh, a festival, I believe, once a year, and it's it's really fun where they have a bunch of different comedians come together. I won tickets one year, and the headliner was Amy Schumer and Aziz Azari, and I gotta be honest, it was the warm-ups that were the funniest. Uh, John Mulaney was a warm-up at that time. He still wasn't uh, as known, well-known as he is now. And he was the funniest person in the world. So I have to say he's probably right there behind Fluffy. So I'm curious to see what you guys, you know, is your favorite comedy or comedian. So whoever wants to start off, just go ahead and jump right in. Sorry, I'm working today. <laughs> Sarah. I have a hard time with this one because I'm in the normal sense of the word comedian. I have never really liked comedians, like going to a stand up comic, that kind of thing. It's not really been, uh, it, it does remind me a lot of satire and a lot of negative humor a lot of times. And so I, it's not something that I prefer. When you, when you read the thing of satire, it reminded me of uh, the, the definition of it. It reminded me of a time when I was trying to explain sarcasm to a nine year old. And as I was explaining it, I'm like, well, is that really what it is? And so I'm going back and forth and he basically just says, you mean, so it's like a lie. I'm like, hmm, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so, so I've had a hard time with that one because it just seems mean and not nice. Like when people talk about roasts and things, but there is, there is one comedian that I thought was kind of humorous, even though I'm not sure I should think he's humorous, but his name is John Christ. And he does all these uh, things about Christians and stuff and and one of them that he did was about missionaries and so he made fun of them as they were going down having these bright green these bright green shirts on and hey you know the whole reason that we're going to mexico is so that people can see what we're doing and and it re it, it was funny because it's partly true which is really sad speaking i mean like it is partly true that sometimes we don't do it for the right reasons and missions should be done for the right reason and yeah. So I have a hard time with that kind of humor because I partly think it's funny and partly think I should not think this is funny. So I have a hard time with that. But but John Christ is one of the guys that he has some funny things in there where it's satirical, but kind of spot on. And that's, I think, what Chanel, you were explaining to us about satire is there is an element of truth into it. So thank you very much, Heather. Thank you, Sarah. I know that struggle of finding something funny that you probably th shouldn't think is funny, but is kind of true. I, I understand that. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Joey? Go for it. My mic back up here. Start my clock. <clears throat> my favorite is sarcasm. Anybody around me is, is sarcasm. And, and it, my favorite though, my, what I really enjoy is sarcasm in more of a um, ridiculous sense. So a lot of times since I'm coaching a lot of younger, so high school, junior high, sometimes 11, 12 years old, plus you got these rug rats right here. <clears throat> so I like to really be, I like to test to see if they're listening to me. So I will say something completely like the sky is red. It's great red sky today. And then just let it, and I'm not, I'm not emphasizing anything, but just to see if they're, they're listening. Good example was, was yesterday we had some of our friends down the street. We call them the B bros. They're three brothers. They all, all their first names start with B. Corinne knows them. So we got Blake, Braden, and Bennett. So the B bros is what we call them. And the middle B bro, Braden got really upset when he was younger that I would call him the B bros. I don't know if he thought it was a bad thing. He goes, why does he call me the B bros? And so I would, I would call him the B bros. And even though he was, he was upset, but they came over last night. They had an invitation for, I think, Braden's birthday, the middle B bro. <clears throat> and they were just coming over. It was the kind of middle of the day. It was a little hot. We probably weren't going to be playing outside. And they were, they were lingering a little bit after the, we got the invitation. And the littlest one, Bennett, I think he's two or three and he's a really cute kid. And he's just in that phase, a really happy-go-lucky phase and things like that. And, and I said, is, is that all? And I'm looking at him. I go, is that, is that all you have? Is it just the invitation? Or are you going to do a, a telegram? Were you going to do a little like singing telegram? Were you going to sing a Christmas carol? And he goes, nope, that's it. And he's in that phase where he's not, 
really think, you know, it's like normal conversation for me to ask something like that, where the other two brothers kind of looked at me and their, you know, third eye popped up right here on me when they were looking at me. And that's, that's, that's kind of how their reaction was. So I like that. That's my favorite kind of humor is using that sarcasm, but then playing with them a little bit in almost a, an out of this world realm to see if they're listening. So that's my favorite kind of humor. I love that. Yeah. And it's always fun to see if they are listening. And most of the times they aren't, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, Corinne or Chanel? Oh. Whoever would like to go first. Well, if we talk about sarcasm or satire, uh, I love political sarcasm. And that part I enjoy when it is really in the news, because if we don't laugh at the current events of the day, we're going to really be absorbed by them in a negative way. So I really enjoy when some politicians uh, are being presented in some humorous light. I don't appreciate when people confuse sarcasm with uh, or satire with offensive language uh, that happens usually in a workplace. I don't condone that. And they don't see the fine line between humor and offense. Uh, as far as art is concerned, uh, I really love some comedians from the past, like very, very old Hollywood stuff, Danny Kaye or uh, Robin Williams, which has a couple of how many years ago and maybe Eddie Murphy, you know, I enjoy these comedies. Uh, I enjoy comedies uh, in the movies and I enjoy reading the interesting, uh, you know, stories which really make me laugh. Uh, I try to use humor in my discourse every day and Joey knows that because without humor, we cannot really uh, take the stress out of ourselves. It's a, it's a very nice component that accompanies our thoughts and ideas. And of course, satire uh, is always in the middle of my conversations because I try to qualify events of the day in some colorful way. Thank you so much for sharing, Corinne. And I can't believe I forgot how much I love Robin Williams too. He was such a hilarious comedian. Still so sad that he's not with us anymore. Uh, so but, Chanel, uh, I was going to comment on Corinne. I just really appreciated what you said about there's a fine line between like the humorous piece of it and and being mean and ridiculed because I think that's the piece that I don't like because it just feels mean a lot of times and so it, like being offensive with it or just being funny with it. So thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely appreciate the difference because there is a difference, right? Okay, Chanel, Madam President. Thank you. Well, it seems like Corinne and I have something in common because my favorite kind of humor is also political satire. I immensely enjoy it. And I like to say that I'm very, very balanced and unbiased because I get my political humor from both the Babylon Bee, which is pretty conservative, and Saturday Night Live, which is pretty liberal. So I have, have that nice balance there. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to be equally cynical with everybody, right? <laughs> That's what comes from listening to that. Cynical with everyone, both parties, all politicians. But I actually have the Babylon B app on my phone. And I will say that sometimes if I just need to calm down and have a laugh, that's something that I will read. I do not agree with all of the articles or everything that is said. Sometimes I think yeah, I took that a bit far, but I, I greatly appreciate the humor in it. And the Saturday Night Live, SNL, political skits, a lot of the debate spoofs are <clears throat> rapidly funny to me. I, one of my favorite things about election years is how many of the debate spoofs come out with all of the candidates. It's hilarious. So that is probably my, definitely my favorite type of humor. I truthfully don't follow really any comedians, so I couldn't say that I have a favorite comedian, and I'm also not 
huge fan of Colleen Dupie. So I don't know that I have a favorite one of those either, but political satire, that's where it's at. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think we have a little bit more time or did you guys want it to move forward? Because I am curious. Um, I know, uh, Chanel, you just said that you probably don't have a favorite comedy movie. Uh, my husband's the exact same way with like comedies aren't his thing. But if there is a favorite comedy, I would love to hear it. Uh, for me, I love Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I think that one is absolutely hilarious. I love Jason Segel and um, Kristen Bell. Oh, and Mila Kunis, you can't forget her. She's she's hilarious. But that I would have to say is my favorite. Does anybody have any favorite comedy movies? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, it's up to you guys if you wanted to maybe answer any more of those questions or if you guys want to move forward. But those are the questions I had today. Did you go, Heather? Yeah, yeah, I went first. <laughs> you, you know what? I didn't even get your you get your time. No, but it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I could go again. Let's see. I go again? Uh, oh, another favorite um, comedian that I saw, and I'm so I feel bad because I'm blanking on his first name. Oh, Jeff Dunham, the the ventriloquist. He is hilarious. If you guys ever get the opportunity to go see him, he is so funny. We saw him. Gosh. 10 years ago when he came to Fresno and I have never laughed so hard. And as much as I love Fluffy, I have to admit Jeff Dunham's show was probably even, even funnier. Uh, so if you guys ever get the opportunity, I definitely recommend to go see a show. Yeah, I remember the movie I wanted to mention, Naked Gun. I love all of those <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> He's hilarious. Okay, well, I guess that is it for table topics today. Thank you so much for answering and having fun with me. I know comedies can, can be a hit and miss with everybody. So thank you for answering. I really appreciate your participation. I will take it back now. As general moderator. Passing it back to Madam President. <laughs> We're going to call our evaluation team back up to give their reports. So we'll start with Joey with our timer and our table topics. All right, hot off the press. So for our table topics, <clears throat> we had Sarah came in at 139, perfect Chanel 134. Heather, again, I know you, I did remember you do that in the beginning, caught me off guard. I was just kind of listening to your, your story, I think a little bit too much, then forgot to time. But that last one was 30. Four seconds was short, but I know the other one was a lot longer than that. Probably landed right in the middle. I came in at surprise, surprise, four seconds overtime, 204, and Corinne came in at 151. So everybody except for myself were a little bit outside or inside versus my, you know, versus me. Okay. Good job, guys. Joey, I was. Oh, wait, sorry, to comment for Joey. So, Joey, do we need to get like a little shot caller when it gets to two minutes and just. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing. It's funny. We going back to satire. The people that don't go very very long in the beginning, but end up going too long, is bringing them back. The people that go too long, never go not enough. You find that kind of interesting. There's never like a, a rebound effect the other way. It's always the short go too long, bringing them back. It's never the too long coming back. Means you have a lot to tell. You know, I have a lot to say. I have yeah. a lot to say. Right. Yes. It means that you, you want to bless the world with your unique, infinite wisdom. Yes. Only you have in your mind only your speech. Right. Whether it's good or bad. I want to let everybody know. I am I am an example of that kind of thing, Joey. I think my first table topics, my very first Coast Costume meeting was 17 seconds. And I was <laughs> so terrified to get up. Um, and my goal today was to make it not over two minutes because I think my last three table topics have been over two, just over two long. So exactly. So give it a. I'm now going to call Corinne back up to the podium to give our boss counter summary of the meeting. 
Well, I hope this is an accurate estimate. Uh, we'll start with Chanel. I haven't noticed any deviations. It was perfect. But you really tend to use so. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe that's not even a word parasite. It opens a sentence. And under other circumstances, it would be welcome. But in our strict <laughs> requirements, you shouldn't watch properly. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, header, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ohms. Uh, and that's all. There weren't any other deviations, but um is basically an opening uh, for any new idea to start. Uh, personally, I'm not fine with it, but if the rules don't require it, then you need to really probably reduce at least to five for the beginning. <laughs> uh, Joey Myers, four ums today. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a and weather getting hotter. You, maybe you were just too carried away with the topic of the day and basically fell into the trap, you know? Said too much. Maybe those are those extra four seconds that I, I spoke over my table topic. Uh -huh. Sarah loves to use like. Whether it's necessary or unnecessary, that will interfere with the flow of thought. So basically, so is Chanel's interesting uh, choice, and like is Sarah's choice. Probably we need to watch those. And I counted for Sarah. Oh, also, there is another word you're using, and, and not for linking purposes. So therefore, and and like are those two words that probably you need to work on. One, two, three, four. Four ohms. I can't. Mm -hmm. So that's my report of the day. Thank you. If you, if you come again, I'm going to ask you to be all chapter. Yeah, uh, I told you it's going to be good. <laughs> I did say that. It was awesome. <laughs> you, thank you. I will be working on my skills. The very report. Everybody said it. I found everybody using the word sapphire since it was a significant theme of our table talk. I think it was pretty easy for everybody to integrate it. So, well done. <laughs> our meeting overall today, thank you everybody for being here and fulfilling your roles. Everybody did really well for only having five people. The last couple of weeks, the meetings have been a bit small. I think it's a busy season for people with graduations and just entering summertime. So, uh, but again, it's like that. <laughs> Hopefully, over the summer, we'll be able to pick back up a bit and remember that you can invite friends, continue to tell people about our group so that we can. More, more, more people makes the experience more engaging for everyone. <laughs> I'm pretty much going into closing, I suppose. I, we're, as, as I said before, we're not going to be meeting next week. So for our agenda, we'll be filling it out for June 7th, which is two weeks from today. The theme is lessons I learned the hard way. I think that would be an interesting topic. I'm scheduled to speak, and I also put Joey down to speak on the 7th. I don't have any other speeches scheduled out aside from that. So if, if anybody wants to sign up, Sarah, Heather, just let me know. I'll be honest, I'm in a period of time where there's going to be a lot of changes very soon. So I don't think I can take that on just at this moment. Okay. I'm not going to be here in two weeks. Totally understand. Sarah's not going to be here. Joey and I are going to be speaking. Heather, are you planning to be able to attend in two weeks? I'll be able to attend. I just don't want to fool myself into thinking I can take on an added responsibility right now if I'm just being totally honest. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand that. That is why that is showing you attend. Heather, I'll put you in as 
Toastmaster for two weeks from now. If I can do anything, let me know. I'll try to reach out to some of our other members and see if we can get some so that we can put them down for a role. I know that Kalani hasn't been here in a few weeks. I think it's been four weeks or so since we've seen her. So she reached I out. Know. Oh, did she? Yeah, she reached out to me. She was looking for a, <clears throat> a co-op for her her kid. I don't know if it's her first kiddo that's coming through school or what, but she's in front of Clovis Unified, and I think she's just wanting to sit this year out from the public school or government school, however you want to think about it. <clears throat> so she was asking me about that, and she just said, yeah, it's just been busy, and I'm, I'm, I want to come back, but there's a couple things, I guess, in the way that she'll, once those are done, then she can come back. But that's what she said. She reached out. Okay, awesome. And then one other thing, Corinne and I talked last week or a couple last couple of weeks or so, and and he's got a an office since there's not a lot of in persons right now. Might be okay. He's like his law office is over by Fresno State. Corinne, is that? Did you want to talk about that a little bit or? Talked to Chanel about it. Actually. Oh, you already did. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, if we move a couple of pieces of furniture there, we could probably, we need a smaller table though. Mm -hmm. This one is too big for, for that space. Mm -hmm. Right. And these are not our tables. Hmm? These are not our tables. So we can yeah, but if we have a smaller table, uh, maybe portable something, we could yeah. probably use it. The chairs are yours? No. Oh. no chairs can't count either. Hmm. We could bring some. I know we have four fold outs and a table, like a card table type, just sure. square. That, that could I mean, be good. And I make the arrangements beforehand if we need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as an option, as an option. But it would be good for at least right now. It's not it definitely nothing permanent, especially if we start getting more coming because it, it just, if we had our a full eight people or nine like we've had over Bitwise plus, it's, we wouldn't all fit, but for now with small gatherings in person, it would be a good, good thing. And, and he's got the air conditioning and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's in Fresno. Yeah. It's, it's actually right by my house. It's like a mile from my house. So. Oh, is it? <laughs> uh -huh. is, do you have any sort of monitor or TV screen? Uh, no, no, but you could use probably your, uh, equipment right are you yeah we were talking about we could get like a projector mm. possibly yeah we yeah. could get a projector it's not yours no the TV no oh. it stays no. okay yeah, yeah projector would work though because i think you i think corinne you your walls are white or pretty light i think yeah we can really put something in there we'll see yeah, yeah. Mm. okay we have our our next board meeting is I want to say in two weeks, so maybe we can we can talk, talk about it. Mm -hmm. Anything else that we need to discuss, mention? I think that's good. Sarah, have you had the chance to follow up with either of the libraries? Okay. No, not yet. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for doing that though. And and reaching out to us with a, a good lead. Okay. Awesome then. I will adjourn the meeting early today. Everybody gets in. Um, I'm not showing there, so I, I don't think. Nah. Oh no, they, they can see you. Uh, we can see you. They, they can see you. We can see you, Corinne. Yeah. So you can see how I played with the flower. <laughs> you got complimentary <laughs> colors, Corinne. Complimentary colors. You got the blue. And well, kind of yellow. But yeah, primary color, should I say? It's primary. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see you put it on as a hat. I think it would look real cute. <laughs> it's definitely your color. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Corinne. Welcome to. Oh, the there we team. go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Corinne. Glad you could come. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>